All right, PBO people, I am the analyst Elikazams, and I am here with the New York Malamars for the week two pickums. Uh, our current record is six and one after the first week, almost perfect. Uh, so, uh, what do you, do you think of last week's games? Uh, I thought we had some pretty good games in general. There's some pretty weird games too. Uh, I think p things went pretty much how we thought they would. Even the some of the things we predicted seems to happen. But I thought it was a good first week. I like most of the teams. I don't think there's any like really bad teams. So hopefully right. that keeps up. And with that, we'll move on to the first game. It's a game of the week and probably the big game of the week. We've got the Frederick Klefkies versus the Abbotsford Agrons. All right, so uh, I think this team, this game could be really, really interesting. Both teams uh, are coming off of a win. Agron's a, a much closer game. Uh, Klefkies made really good use of their Terror Captain in Appleton uh, last week. So um, some things that I noticed right away is that uh, the only flying resist on Agron's side is Heatran. And uh, Heatran doesn't really like Tinted Lens, Braviary, Hisui, and I think even Sheer Force Hurricanes from Braviary, Hisui, it is a Terra Captain, could be very, very devastating, especially if, you know, Esper Wing is there on a Tinted Lens set to get the plus one speed. I think uh, Braviary, Hisui has a pretty unique uh, situation in this game. Uh, on Abbotsford's side, I think uh, Electrode, Hisui is looking pretty, pretty nasty this game, especially if it's Terra Ice. You know, its ability to just uh, volt around and, you know, hit Garchomp for really, really strong damage. Terra Fairy could even work because it probably still does about 60 to Garchomp. And you're hitting, you know, hands and you're hitting uh, uh, mainly hands. And then, like, Appleton pre-Terra, you're hitting them as well uh, with some nice damage. I think uh, Muckalola is really, really important for the Agrons uh, because um, it is... a uh, really key spit f wall to uh take uh potential hits from braviary and it also obviously is the main thing holding back that spectre from being able to completely you know run through the team uh underwear clef could maybe help a little bit like underwear spit f clef because uh spectre's you know nasty plots or calm minds won't really be able to uh boost its damage uh too much but uh i do think uh you really want that muckalola there to help with that situation uh, Dragapult versus Spectre, they both have, you know, really fast, really powerful ghosts as their uh, main mons here. I, I, uh, Dragapult does outspeed Spectre, which is a, a plus for Agrons, but obviously Spectre is probably more of a threat uh, offensively. I think, like, a Dragapult that's like a uh, Will-O-Wisp could be really, really nice here. I think, like, a, a, a Wisp Hex Pult, uh, Wisping the Garchomp, Wisping the Hands, even Wisping uh, Samurai Hisui, potentially. I think all those are, like, very viable. Because, like, if Quilfish Asui wants to switch in and you Wisp that, that's good, too. It's really... There's a lot of physical attackers on Klefki's side that uh, could really be crippled from a Wisp. And then, like, Hisui, Braviary, and Spectre could be crippled by, like, a Thunder Wave. You could honestly be double status, in my opinion. Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp's decently viable here. Uh, Gliscor is there, obviously. Physical defense Gliscor uh, could be problematic. I think Gliscor looks okay in this game, in general. You know, uh, it's... The, uh, unfortunately, Tigaton and Hands both have uh, pretty good ice coverage and ice punch and ice hammer. So uh, that could prove problematic for Gliscor. Samurai Hisui, you know, it can run Ice Beam, it can run Hydro Pump. Uh, its special attack is not bad, and that will probably one shot a Gliscor uh, if it's physically defensive for, uh, like, Garchomp, for example. Uh, what are you thinking of this game? The first thing I think when I look at it is I think that Clef Keys will have really <clears throat> trouble getting rid of hazards if they get up. Because I think both of the removal are... Uh, Fortress is kind of, without prediction, is a really free switch into Heatran, which Klefki's has real trouble just... Klefki's team has very low special bulk in general, unless it's AV on a couple of these things. So if he gives free switches into Heatran, it just keeps, keeps clicking even just Flamethrower. It's going to wear down its checks really fast, because the only resist is Talonflame itself. Garachomp or Terra Appleton, right? And Samurai, kind so, of. Yeah, but again, it has such low special bulk. Like, yeah. I remember I hit Samurai Hasui with a Surf from uh, uh, Permarina last season, did like 60 damage without a spec. So Heatran is probably going to, like I said, these things can only switch in a couple of times, right? So that's yeah. something I see I think... is that I, I, I think if, if the Gly score is just like defensive with hazards i think that klefkies will have trouble getting rid of it 
over the course of a long game. Um, yeah, I, I think like a the fortress would have to be earthquake. I'm guessing, which uh, yeah, so that's what, it has to be prediction though, because it, like uh, yeah, I, I, he doesn't. I, yeah, if it comes in on on spikes once and he gets a switch to Heatran, then the game is, like it's just a tough position. I think the removal is going to give a lot of free switches without really good prediction, and I could see that becoming an issue in the long run. Yeah, I, um, I do like specs Heatran uh, a lot. I use it a lot in a uh, draft league. Uh, I, I think it's very underrated. I think it could come here. Um, yeah, I think in this game it, it is really strong because I don't think there's that great of an answer that if you're just I don't even think it has to be Magma Storm. If you're just spamming Specs Flamethrower in this game, it's gonna kill the checks really fast. Because when I see Klepkis, I, I hope he doesn't fall into the trap of bringing too many defensive guys to this game. Because it seems like you go, oh, he needs defensive Quillfish, he needs defensive Appleton, he needs defensive Tinkaton, he needs defensive Garachomp. He's just not going to have enough offense if he brings three or four just defensive guys, I don't think, and just 100% relies on Bravery. Because then if he brings Braviary, I think he's probably not going to tear at the Appleton, right? Yeah, I, I think he could try uh, offensive Garchomp. I don't think I don't think that has a, a, a terrible matchup. But um, yeah. I, I will say uh, Unaware Clef is really annoying for that if you're like SD scale yeah. shot. Uh, yeah, I think set up hands is really good here because it has heavy slam, which is going to two hit KO the Clefable regardless. Yeah. Um, so I think ha he has the breakers and hands Braviary. I kind of wish it was Terra Psychic. I think I told him this before. I think Terra Psychic would be better because Esper Wing is a really strong ability with tinted lens. So in this game, yeah, Muckalola is there, but Muckalola cannot be switching in on Braviary and Spectrier. I don't yeah. think it has think it has, it has too much it has too much to do. So I, I think Heatran might actually be put into a defensive role solely because of Braviary. Like if, if it wants to be able to take because nothing can take the Braviary hit except for Heatran. Yeah, which is... I also just to because I pointed like last week the Cryogon thing was crazy. Oh, it'll never come again. In this game, if Tinkaton, which again has to deal with Dragapult, Tinkaton is kind of spread really thin here. Triagonal actually has a really good matchup against this team. Again, if it's not AV hands, you just, you just click ice moves. Like, it's not bad in this game, but... um, yeah, cause A lot of teams are really weak to ice, and Cryagonal's pretty fast. So as like a late-game cleaner, Cryagonal actually does have some... Like, as we saw last week, Cryagonal does have some potential, like, value, just to say if you can set the game up into, like, the, your correct positioning. Um, I... I do think this game is um maybe a little bit uh harder for agrons than uh some would anticipate because of like for example uh how is agrons uh himself getting rid of hazards you know is it going to be rapid spin quick wayable that we're having here uh i i think it could be like a defensive rapid spin quick wayable literally just for samurai hisui because samurai hisui actually does look pretty good this game just spamming razor shell like over and over and over again if, if it just clicks razor shell what's really switching in right it has to be like a defensive uh quick wable i have to imagine or else uh it's two shotting everything so um i, I think when i look at this clef keys has more advantages it just depends on if the team building i think I'm concerned, like, if I was Klefkies, Klefkies is an offensive team, and I just hope he doesn't bring all defense, because then I think that'll mess him up this game. I think he needs to break with uh, hands and Braviary, and then try to clean up with Spectrier. But um, I think he has more advantages, but I think I would still pick Agron's probably 55-45 in this game. Yeah. But uh, I think if Klefkies brings the right sets, I think his team is good into Agron's. I I'm feeling 55-45 too, with the... Uh... Uh, with 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 the agrons i i like i said i think like make your samurai has sweet adamant make it like super strong and it two hits everything i i think braviary should come uh in in the ideal world i think it's really good here uh fortress might need to come obviously if you want to have hazard removal i mean town flame could come because uh if he's getting up spikes only instead of stealth rocks then you know town flame can just uh come in and even if it gets knocked that's not good, but it's still okay if only spikes are up and you can defog, uh, which could be decent. Uh, like a spadef town flame, maybe could be all right. I, I think uh, Rhydon probably doesn't have a place here just because I think Electro's Hisui is so good with Terra that uh, and Rhydon kind of needs the Terra to hold real value here, in my opinion, like real important value. 
But overall, yeah, we go 55-45 in Diagron's favor. Yep. All right. Moving on to our second game of the week. Two teams that are also... Oh, hold on. Uh, two teams that are also 1-0. I don't have the differential there for the Malamars game because uh, that was one of the later games. But they are 1-0 plus uh, 5, I believe. Only Gastrodon falling in the game versus Philadelphia. Well, the Mooch and Embors are plus four after beating the Kyogres 4-0. Two games where I don't know uh, exactly how much information we got about either of the teams. I think this game uh, also can't give uh, too much information one way or the other because I think uh, I mean, just off of rip, the water resists against the rain team are Roaring Mooney Keldeo, right? That's the first thing that comes to mind for me that uh water types really really hurt uh moochin i think in our like draft analysis video we've mentioned that water is one of the main teams to take like uniquely water is one of the main types this team is weak to and uniquely uh the malamars team is like full of offensive water pressure which makes it really really difficult in my opinion uh for moochin to win i don't think they actually have a switch like even if it's skarmory they don't actually have a floatzel switch in it's a sack it's just you do 70 percent back if your rocky helmet you know sturdy so th there's that at least which is nice but um you you, you don't actually have like a le real legitimate switch in beyond sacking for uh chip essentially and then like sacking zapdos to try and get static it's it's a whole static, bunch of it's, it's yeah. a whole bunch of sacking trying to uh Put in a position where Floatzel dies because Floatzel just terrorizes so hard this game. Um, beyond that, Arcaladon I think actually looks pretty good this game. You know, Arcaladon against Skarmory if like with the Electro Shot, Skarmory is really doing nothing. The body presses, you know, they're bouncing and then you're getting plus one defense with that, and then you're Electro Shotting it. It's just really really hard. Uh, if the grassy terrain's up, you know, Arcaladon can eat like an Earthquake from Roaring Moon and it kills Roaring Moon pretty easily. Uh, there's no fairy, so Draco Meteors from Roaring Moon, if it's plus one with Electro Shot, are just raining down, uh, causing havoc. As Skarmory's the only switch in, if Skarmory's switching in, then it no longer has Sturdy, then Floatzel's opened up more. It's it, it's this game, in my opinion, the 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 matchup is the most lopsided we've seen in the league uh, so far this season, in my opinion. The, the way our Caledon and Floatzel kind of tag team this team it makes it almost impossible for Mujin yeah. to win. I'd be very shocked. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna say too much to give you know him too much help, but he preps really well, so I'm sure he'll see this. He has strong priority, which is the best way to deal with you know weather in general. So I'm yeah. sure Keldeo specs vacuum. I haven't really looked at the game much yet. I'm sure Keldeo specs vacuum wave does like 70 to float soul. I'm sure that Terra normal quick attack from uh, what's his name Zangus probably does 60, 70. So he can always revenge it, like it'll make me switch, and then if he swords dances or calm minds on the switch, he definitely has some play because he has the strong priority. But like you said, Zapdos dies in one shot to wave crash. Uh, Skarmu with rocks dies in one shot to wave crash. And also they both can just can't switch in on two liquidations either. So, um, but he definitely does it, and I'm sure he'll have some type of Custap, Berry, switch in skarmory to do something i don't know i'm sure there's something he'll figure out what to do defensive mo well defensive boon wouldn't be very good but um i think he has to have sand slash because like that's his only removal also and like gastrodon is the best count he does have like zapdos is stronger in the rain so he has that he might not even just forego defensive zapdos and just drop thunders yeah like he, 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 he could be like scarf zapdos with like thunder and hurricane and that could be kind of cool i guess yeah. um I think when I'm looking at it, the priority uh, is like the only way. I think if he can set it up, there are definitely conditions where he can win. I, I like I said in the team preview. I think Zangus is a good Terra captain. I had my eye on it, and fighting and normal coverage is actually really good. So I'm sure if he Terra fighting is in close combats, it can kill our Shaladon. I'd have to look at it, but it probably can. Dude, I, I'm... So he he has some play. Um, but the thing is, if Zapdos is offensive, then it's not going to deal with Tornadus T as well, which then outspeeds the moon. Um, 
Yeah, and also, so, like, you know, R R R Keldeo and Sangos can never really sweep because Rillaboom can just grassy glide. And, like, I I'm yeah. sure I'm Glass God kills Keldeo, and I'm sure it does, like, 80 to Zangus if, it's your, if you're, like, adamant. Yeah. So it's, like, all, all of his, like, options for sweeping also get stopped. And, I, I like, uh, the Malamars just have a way more, uh, they have to do way less because Floatzel doesn't need to set up at all. It just needs to come out when the rain is up. It, it, it needs to enter the field. And it picks one. He, he, so Mooch and Larry has to decide who, like who he's throwing out, right? He, he should prep with this game, uh, like assuming, who, like having a game plan of who he throws out. Pretty much is what he should be doing. Yeah. So um. Yep. It, it, it's just a really unfortunate matchup. I'm gonna give it like 90 10, uh, 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 maybe 85 15, just because uh, the like the priority, like you said, has like an opening. Uh, I, I would be very surprised if the Embors win this one, just because they're so bad against water, like, uniquely, and, uh, uniquely, this is a rain team. Yep. Alright, and we're gonna move on to the next game, which is the Golden State Durants versus the Charleston Chesnots. Alright, so, uh, this is a pretty interesting one. Both these teams lost, but they both lost to two really good teams. So I think, like, we haven't fully seen what these two are capable of. I think they could still be, like, top contenders in the league. Charleston has completely revamped the entire team. There's no backs. There's no Gloking. Uh, instead, we have a much faster team with a lot more uh, with a lot more uh, initiative, a lot more pivoting, which I think, uh, from a team construction standpoint, is probably better. The, uh, like top level damage output is probably slightly reduced just because you don't have you know that that powerful core like your core is slightly weaker but uh overall you know bundle looks really really devastating for uh durant's this game durant's second terror captain by the way is uh arboliva it's uh not put in there yet but i believe it's nor normal grass fairy other three typings so uh, I think Bundle, like, uh, there's, there's no Pokemon that wants to take the combination of the Ice move plus Freeze Dry plus uh, Water move, uh, and it, it just outspeeds everything too, so uh, you're going to need to probably have a Scarfer. I think really it comes down to what Scarfer Durance has. Like, I think Scarf Latios uh, looks pretty good against Chestnuts. Uh, firing off uh, those uh, Luster Purges, it really trickles actually everything other than Wochian and Bronzong, so uh, one of those two has to come. And I'm thinking it probably has to be uh, Wo Qian because uh, and it, if Wo Qian is going to Terra out of Dark, uh, then that would be bad. So I don't even know if it can do that. Um, I, I think uh, like Miss Magius has a decent matchup. Obviously, it's getting outsped by Gren, but you can Terra Fairy, and then you're you know you're killing Gren. And uh, its Ghost coverage is you know pretty good for everything else other than Arbeliva, obviously. Rev of Room, the uh, Terra Cap, like the offensive Terra Captain on Durant's side, it has an okay matchup. Uh, it, it's like it's gonna have one of the ground coverage or the fire coverage, right? So Bronzong kind of has to choose between Levitate because Bronzong's the answer to Rev of Room. I would have to assume you have to choose between Levitate and Heat Proof for whether or not it's gonna be you know Temper Flare or uh, Stomping Tantrum. Uh, that's kind of an interesting conundrum to be in. Uh, I, I think Great Tusk holds you know some sort of value here. Uh, it, it, like as a, a Scarfer, it could be pretty good. Obviously, Weezing Galar uh, can be problematic for Great Tusk. Maybe you could run a Heavy Slam. I, I think like a a, a defensive set. Uh, it doesn't hold too much value, honestly. Uh, I, I think offensive Tusk would probably be the way to go with like some coverage moves. Maybe an Ice Spinner for Dawn Fan. You know, close combat to hit Wo Qian or to hit a uh, Bundle. Uh, I don't even know if you necessarily need ground coverage in this game because uh i mean who does it hit i guess dragology and uh Cinder because cinderace is probably gonna need very minimal chip to die to a close combat and there's a lot of pokemon that are immune to ground on uh charleston side i count uh one two three four four different pokemon and i think all are pretty viable and coming because i think rotom wash also looks good in this game it comes in on corviknight really nice you know if you're scarf you can outspeed and you can volt switch around, and uh, if Tusk comes in and you predict correctly, you can go for uh, Hydro Pump. Obviously, like if you're a uh, Volt Absorb Lantern, then that can come in on Rotom Wash, but if it's Trick, then that can be pretty annoying. So uh, I, I kind of like uh, the way Charleston's matchup looks here. I'm trying to uh, 
see what you think about that. Yeah, I think when I really look at it, like bundle is crazy in the game. Like you said, like if it's specs bundle and he predicts the first two or three switches, right? I doubt especially defensive Corviknight can take two ice beam or even freeze dry. If freeze dry does like 45% to Corviknight with specs, I don't know why you just don't click that every single time into this team. Um, so I think it has to be Spadef Corv. Uh, because if it's not, he can literally click specs freeze dry and kill the whole team. Um, because even Crocolore is a, is more physically defensive than specially defensive. I'm sure it takes average damage. And then if you bring it, you're still bringing Crocolore. Yeah, and it's not so, Terra Crocolore either, so it, it can yeah, get hit by it can get hit by water. I think, um, I think Latios, unless it's, uh, I mean, I'd have to, I can't think of a set off the top of my head, but I feel like it's stuffed by Bronzong, just like straight up. Uh, Shadow Ball would be the move. Yeah, and then uh, Bronzong could at least, does Bronzong have Thunder Wave? Like, can it status it back? Um, I believe so. I'm not 100% yeah, sure just, on that. Yeah, even if he can just get a status on it, a gy gyro ball. Yeah, gyro ball, will do like, gyro ball will do like 45 or 50, I'd have to admit. I mean, I would, if you're minus speed, it'd have to do like 50. It, it to a KO. Yeah, and that's that's a big thing. And then Wash is kind of a stuff for Great Tusk. Um, uh, close combat will do over half, for sure. Yeah, I think it, physically defensive, if, he, if he'd have to you know, be banded or bulk up. I think Rodent Mosh could switch in once at least. Like, it's not it's not a perfect, but it, like you said, it stops ground spam. And then even if he bulks up on the switch, you know, unless he substitute, yeah. he still can't take the Hydro Pump or the Will-O-Wisp. So I, I will say to be... the, 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 the Wash has to be careful Volt switching because there are three immunities I'm uh, recognizing. Yeah. There's Thunderous and there's Lantern and Great Dust. And I think... Uh, Thunderous Therian is like underratedly pretty dangerous here. Like it is uh, very dangerous because like, it has U-turn for Wochian. Yeah, yeah, it has U-turn, and uh, you know it also has like a. You could just be like Focus Blast, and that could really hurt Wochian. And yeah. uh, just a, electric, like electric spam on this team. Plus, uh, I, I believe it gets Energy Ball. Uh, or no, no, it has Not, Grass Knot. Grass Knot. That's grass what it is. Knot. I knew it had a grass move, so if it gets grass knot Thunder Asterion, then, you know, just spam the electric moves. Donphan's the only immunity, really. Yeah. You grass knot yeah, that, this, and then you and yeah, then you U-turn. Yeah, it could easily be nasty plot with U-turn. Grass yeah. move and electric move. Yeah, like that coverage. Maybe even agility to beat Bundle. Yeah. Maybe even all, agility. All, all, yeah, like instead of nasty, because I don't even know if you need nasty plot, really. Uh, yeah. You, you could literally just be agility, and then, like, you're, you're just, you're, the pressure that Thunder Asterion applies is really, really intense, in my opinion, in this game. Uh, I, yeah, I think this is, this is a really close game, honestly. The matchup is in Don's favor, like the, the Mons, I think. Even though, like, I think Durant's team is better overall, but Bundle is really, really good in this game. Yeah, I, I think the Latios has, like, so I, I think even though we're seeing it here and, like, Charleston should predict it, Durant still has to bring it. The Latios should be Scarf. I, I think the Scarf yeah. Latios, because it becomes way less valuable when it can't outspeed Bundle and it can't outspeed Cinderace. And it can't, yeah. and it speed ties like an Arc Dusk. I think all that makes it less valuable for sure. Yeah, he does have the Cinderace is a bad matchup in this game, I think, because uh, Greninja famously outspeeds it by like one point or something stupid like that. I think it could be so, really cool if it was like booster speed bulk up Tusk. That could be pretty dangerous, actually. Um, yeah, that always catches people off guard, right? Yeah, I, I've been um, I've been absolutely obliterated by that before. Uh, it, it's a very dangerous set. Uh, anything to get Durant's speed up really helps him this game. Uh, it really. Yeah, and then I think you might see our Believa in this game because Terra Shadow Miss like Shadow Ball Miss Magius also doesn't have a great resist. Like if he just spams that. Yeah, um, I, I, you could you, good. you could just be non Terra our Believa probably uh, because yeah. the Terra types are kind of weird. They're normal grass and uh, fairy. I think staying normal yeah. grass is like perfectly fine for him. Uh, I, yeah. I think. Like you want the Rev of Room for its Terra, because if Bronzong's like chipped or weakened, Bron uh like one shift gear from Rev of Room and the game can kind of just get blown open if you're like Terra Water yeah. to hit Don Fan. Uh, yeah. I think I think Don has the advantage, but I think the overall power level of Durant's is more, and Don hasn't used this team yet, so I don't know how much he's practiced with it. I think I'll go 55-45 Durant's. Yeah, I'll, but I'll, I'll Don go... can definitely win. I'll, yeah, I'll go the same uh, person, but I'll go 60-40 in favor of Durant's. Uh, yeah. 
I, I, I think uh, I would be very scared of Latios if I was Charleston. Yeah. And with that, we'll move on to the game next. We have another two more. One, it seems like a lot of uh, one and O teams are fighting, and then a lot of uh, O and one oh, teams. You get, you gave Philadelphia my differential. Oh yeah, I did. So okay. It's Philadelphia is just reversed. Everything up there, it's just reversed. Yeah. So Philadelphia is O and one minus five, and uh, or actually, I gave the uh, I gave him Pittsburgh stuff. I always mix those All two right. up. This is Pittsburgh stats because uh, it says Valiance, right? So, uh, but he is zero and one. So, um, this is the uh, the gouging fire team. This is the team you beat last week. I think he obviously fares better this week against the low punnies than he did last week, where F Floatzel was really really antagonistic towards him. Yeah. Um, I would be uh, worried about facing the low punnies. Uh, because the low ponies has a uh, really really strong uh, top three core, and I think uh, High Dragon is actually uh, pretty menacing for uh, Flygons, like a, a Scarf High Dragon, or even just like a nasty plot High Dragon. Of, yeah, really uh, any High Dragon at all of some kind. It's any <laughs> it, it hits everything except like Wigglytuff with super effective damage with like Flamethrower, Dark Pulse, uh, Dragon move. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's really, really difficult for uh, Flygons to kind of find a way to not get uh, really severely uh, hurt. You can even be physical to have scale shot so you can boost your speed and then just have flamethrower for the scissor. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you yeah. could just be, like, scale shot, uh, crunch, which would hit Sloking for more than Dark Pulse probably, and then you could just have flamethrower because it, it will one-shot scissor anyways, no matter what. And then, um... That set could be really, really dangerous, uh, especially if it's like a Dragon Dance set or like fourth move Iron Head for Wigglytuff, theoretically, even if you're like actually scared of the Wigglytuff coming and doing something. Um, I think this is another week where like a, a Raquinid isn't like super necessary but could come theoretically because, uh, you know, it's decent against Slowking. Uh, against Gouging, it could uh, probably do some damage with like a Liquidation. I don't know how necessary the uh, sticky webs are. It helps slow down Gengar, and it probably opens up Hydreigon a lot if it's going to be like a special Hydreigon who isn't boosting its speed and just has nasty plot. That could open up Hydreigon a little bit, which could be nice. Um, I will say uh, Blood Moon looks pretty freaking nasty here. Uh, you, you, you just have to get like the play right, right? Earth Power or Blood Moon uh, probably one-hit KOs everything on the field. Right, if you click the yeah. right move, um, so Mary's gonna have to predict around that really, really hard to not lose a Pokemon anytime Blood Moon uh, hits the field. Uh, Blaziken can obviously be there to revenge. I think Blaziken has like a you know a pretty decent matchup here. Slow King is obviously there. I think like Gouging Fire could probably take one close combat. I uh, I don't know if you can take a plus two close combat. I want to say it's close. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, Diancie's probably going to end up coming to this game. And it's probably going to be like a Terra Terra Water uh, Diancie so that uh, it can uh, do its job of walling much better. It, yeah. uh, uh, like a Calm Mind uh, Terra Water Diancie actually kind of looks threatening here, in my opinion. Um, I, I think uh, I'm kind of liking how it looks for low putties a little bit here. Uh, even though Blood Moon does look pretty good in this game. Yeah, I think that Flygons has play, so I think Gengar beats everything, essentially. Um, you know, if you if you were just sub Dazzling Gleam, like Ghost, and then Poison move, like, that's pretty good against this team, and it outspeeds everything, naturally. So you'd figure it would be Scarf Hydreigon, Scarf Enamorous, one of those two, right? But... If it switches in on a sub or it comes in when the Gengar has a sub off, like, it's really tough to deal with that. Um, because, you know, the top three on low punnies are standard Scarfers, right? Enamorous, Hydreigon, Gold Ango. But they're not all going to be that set. So um, I think that's a good set. I think Blood Moon, like you said, Silk Scarf, Life Orb, like whatever. Just shoot attacks. Try to get two attacks off, like when you switch in and you're good to go. Um, Scizor can always come in on Enamorous if it's not subbed and kill it. So that's pretty good. And then U-Turn threatens Hydreigon and Goldango. It has knockoff, threatens Goldango. Um, 
Blaziken cannot, it can switch in on it, but it doesn't want to get chipped because Blaziken kills itself most of the time. So I think he, he definitely, and Gouging Fire, um, they have to bring Diancie or Mudsdale, it seems, are the only things that can even conceivably kind of deal with setup Gouging Fire once it has one uh, Dragon Dance. So Diancie's a really good Gouging Fire check, though. So that's, because it, it, can, it can come in on it and set up itself by just clicking Diamond Storm and probably two hit KOing it if it's attack invested. And if it's Terra Water, it's not taking much damage from even a plus one Dragon Claw or Earthquake, um, assuming that it's uh, booster energy attack or speed. I, it, it probably doesn't two hit KO even with a Dragon Dance up if it's like max HP, some attack and some defense. So I definitely think Flygons has play. His unfortunate thing is like Slow King is not really good in this game at all. So he's losing the chilly reception because, you know, it loses to Godango, it loses to Hydreigon. It's it's okay against Enamorous, but Enamorous can probably sub on it. It's not really that great against Blaziken. Because um, Blaziken has knockoff, it probably two hit KOs with, a, with an SD and a life orb. Um, I think Raikou could be okay. Because it could Calm Mind and then Aura Sphere probably kills a chipped uh, Blood Moon. So then you're free Volt Switching everywhere. So I think... Uh, I think I like low punnies 60 40 good. I think that uh, Flyguns has like two or three really good sets. I think Scizor is good. I think Luna is good. And I think Gengar is good. And gouging, if you can chip the. Um, if like low punnies blows Diancy early on, it's some sweeping set and it's low. Then I think that this thing comes in at the end, gouging fire with like, even if it's its own sunny day and procs its own thing and it gets this SD, uh, uh, Dragon Dance up, there's nothing that can really stop it. So um, I think yeah. Flygons definitely have a chance. So, but Low Punnies, I, I, gotta, I gotta go with them until we see Flygons more in the top division because Low Punnies is a strong player and they have some advantages. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go 65 35 in the favor of the Low Punnies for sure. I think they have a. Uh... A, a few strong pieces that Flygons is going to have to figure out how to overcome. All right. On to the next game. Two uh, 0-1 teams. Uh, Sunnyside was in a much closer game. Well, Valiance uh, kind of got uh, their butt kicked. There's really no other way to put it. Uh, so this is a, uh, a kind of... I, I guess I'm going to be saying the same thing I said last week, but this didn't really come to fruition. Kiram kind of... Uh, <laughs> obliterates Sunnyside. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Kiram should yeah. 2KO everything on this team. Uh, theoretically, right? Because I, I got to say that now, because it didn't happen last time when... Uh, yeah. we, we, theoretically, Kiram destroys everything here. Uh, even Screamtail doesn't really appreciate, like, a Kira Ice Beam. It should do, like, 40. Uh, especially if it's, like, the su setup uh, Screamtail that Sunnyside really likes to bring. Uh, I, I think, literally, Kira could be Scarf again and hold really high value. Uh, if it, if it like, uh, came and it needed to be. I think, uh, Treads needs to come this time, probably. Just because, uh, Sunnyside has a lot of really good, um, hazards. Uh, Treads could be, like, a booster speed. Two outspeed Cinderace and Meowskarada hit him with like an Ice Spinner. It's probably going to have Ice Spinner right for Landorus or Meowskarada hit him with an Earthquake. Have Rapid Spin, maybe have Rocks. Kind of just be like a, a glue piece that has uh, the things to keep the team together. I, I think like a, a Volcarona, because obviously like a Sunnyside's weak to set up. I think a Volcarona looks pretty good here. Like if Volcarona gets plus one from Quiver Dance behind Grimmsnarl screens, and it's just like Fiery Dance, uh, Bug Buzz, and then... Um, Morning Sun, like with the QD. Oh, yeah, Volcarona wins. Volcarona definitely wins. If if it's just that, right? What is what does Sunnyside do? It's 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 you need like minimal chip on Lando so that it can't Stone Edge and one hit KO Volk, obviously. Minimal chip on yeah. Ting Lu probably. But I I think Volcarona really really messes Sunnyside up in like a pretty devastating way. Uh, this team. Again, it's hazard removal. Oh, it's not Cinderace, by the way. It's Glow King. So Cinderace isn't even here to outspeed like a Kyurem if it's just Specs Kyurem. So I think Specs Kyurem right. could actually be pretty nasty too, if I'm being honest. Um, this team, uh, again, its hazard removal is Altaria. So Glamora. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it again. I think Valiant's matchup is pretty good here. He should theoretically win. The, like Glamora, come on down, put up all the hazards in the world, right? Theoretically, hopefully. I, I yep. think I, I think 
I'm going to say it again, this should be a good matchup for Valiance, and he should win this game. That's how it should go. Like, Annihilate, set up Annihilate, taking, what, flip turns from Aloe to get its boost, it takes Meowskarada hits, especially if it has Grimmsnarl screens. Uh, I, 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 Valiance should win this game. I think it's pretty heavily in their favor. The, the things in the favor for Sunnyside, Streamtail is very annoying. Uh, the Valiants might not have the pure power, like, initially to really break through the defensive core of Sunnyside, uh, which could prove to be, you know, problematic. Uh, if Valiants has, like, literally no way of stopping setup, then, like, Stroomtail or Fion could theoretically sweep, like Comfey did last week against him, which, uh, would obviously prove to be, uh, a very annoying situation. Um, Clef Clefkey... I think is like a decent Kiromancer. Obviously, Earth Power exists, but Clefty has Magnet Rise. So if if it, it's like um, I, I mean, it should be a locked Kirim in my opinion, anyways. But I feel like Spadef Clefty. I have to imagine you take like uh, an I Ice move. Okay, so he has so he has to predict at least. You know what I mean? He has to predict and go for Earth Power correctly. And even then, the next turn he probably has to switch in case you have Magnet Rise. Uh, so, like, it's, it's a good one-time switch as long as Valiance can predict correctly. Uh, Gloking could be pretty annoying, you know what I mean? Uh, it could hopefully take, uh, a hit from, you know, Karam as well, if it's, like, AV, potentially. Uh, but I, I do think this should firmly be in Valiance's favor, the, like, on, pa on yeah. paper. Yeah, I val uh, w one thing I see when I, th I think is strong is Landorus is really strong in this game. It could just kind of just EQ forever if there's no Kilowattril there. Even just, uh, it, it, you'd be sad losing the power, but if it's Scarf Landorus, there's only so many Earthquakes that a lot of these things can take. I think, other than that, though, uh, Sunnyside, outside of their like normal weird sets, doesn't have any advantages that I just blatantly see. Um, I think it should be Roar Vaporeon. A Valiance, just bring Roar Vaporeon in this game. Even if you don't think you need it, just bring Roar Vaporeon. Um, other Vapor if it's max def Whirlwind yeah, if it's max defense Vaporeon, it could probably take like a uh, Scarf EQ too. So yeah. there's there's your soft yeah, that, check at the very least. Yeah, I if the one thing I see for sure when you play Sunnyside, just bring Taunt and Roar and just phasing. So yeah, maybe or, or, or just Trick like, or like anything to stop yeah. setup. Anything to stop setup, yeah. bring it. But on a rip, we gotta we gotta go seventy thirty valiance because Volcarona should yeah. win. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go. Iron should win. I'll go seventy five. I mean, we're making the same mistake we made last week because we gave this guy what he, he. This is the only one we got wrong, by the way. We gave this like an eighty something, an eighty twenty. So I'll go seventy five twenty five. So I mean, fool me once, fool me twice. We'll see the second week, right? But on paper, this should be a Vancouver game. Yep. Same thing with Ting Lu, though. So, like, e EQ spam looks relatively strong. Um, but so it probably has the most, the must bring for Valiance looks like defensive Vaporeon with phasing. Yeah. And just flip turn. Or e instead that of, seems good. Yeah. I, I mean, Roar's probably Roar better. Uh, yeah. Roar, Roar seems better uh, just because Glamora's probably coming and, you know, Glamora gets up the hazards. So, Roaring gets you the hazards. But you could just be Haze, too, theoretically, if you really yeah. needed to be. Yeah, um, I think does does Hayes get rid of the booster energy boost? Uh, I believe it does. Okay, if it does, then that's fine. But I um, but yeah, either one. All right, and moving on to the next game, I believe this is the final game of the week. We have the Norwalk Noiverns, who are one and zero after beating the uh, previously mentioned Sunnyside Scream Tales. Versus the New Jersey Dracos, who are 0-1-1, minus 3, after losing to Low Punnies in a pretty interesting game. Um, I think that this game is um, kind of interesting. So, uh, Norwalk did make some changes. They have Hitmontop now, who is at least, you know, a spinner. And uh, they also have Volbeat, who uh, is really good at stopping fast Pokemon. So... Yeah. Uh, Dracos has really fast Pokemon. Theoretically, Volbeat can neuter speed, neuter... Like, you it, you have to choose but probably two of the six Pokemon, two of the main offensive threats, can get completely neutered by uh, Volbeat Thunder Waves. Yes, Sneasler is not 
Well, if it's because it, it, it can't set up and then rock slide, it has to rock slide on the switch. Yeah. So that's going to be unfortunate. However, um, if indeed he does get Siggy terrain up, I believe that does block Volby, correct? Because priority gets blocked and the moves become priority. It should. Yes. yes. So should Volby block. actually will get blocked as long as that is up. But I think with if it's out. And Ndidi goes down early, like it did last week, with a with a somewhat odd set on the Ndidi and letting it die early. Then, all of a sudden, uh, Volbeat becomes very, very threatening. And like we've always discussed with Draco's team, the second, like, one piece collapses, it kind of, kind of all unfurls. Um, I think, like, uh, Draco's are kind of out of luck here in terms of... You know, there's two unaware mons. You're going against a very yeah. fat team. You can't I don't set, think they can break this core. You, you can't set up out of this. One. And it's a lot easier for Norwalk. Like, it, it, Norwalk's hazard removal, it's not good. It's hit on top now. But it does exist, and the hazard's on the opposite side. I mean, they're strong, like it's Colossal and Orthworm and Crocodile, which isn't bad. But, I mean, it's not a Terra Orthworm. So, I, hit on top can come in and Rapid Spin. You know what I mean? And uh, there's no... No, no ghost. There's no ghost. No ghost. So you can. So the hazard removal for Noivorn isn't even like the weakness this week necessarily. No. So I, I think this is firmly in in Noivern's camp at the moment. I, I yeah. think. Um, Noivern has too many things. Like Prim could beat Claude in the long run if it wasn't water absorb, but it should be water absorb Claude with unaware Skeledurge and Hydrapple and Milotic. Like, I don't think that it can. I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing without going in depth how the, Deoxys, if it gets set up, can blow through Milotic eventually, and that can beat everything, I think. Um, but even then, maybe it's just I'd, death. I'd, I'd have to imagine Dirge lives and then like does 80 with Shadow Ball. Yeah. And then I don't, I don't like this matchup for Jersey Dracos. Like we said in the team preview, what my fears were. I think we both agreed on what our fears about the team were that it looks really devastating and on ladder this would be crazy but when you know it's coming you just you just if you survive the first seven turns like low punny did this team has no late game like it can't it can't come back like if it gets behind it's just dead yeah so, and, and then... he's playing against a stall team like this team is made to beat offense so i think this is a this is the worst matchup that dracos could have i think and then and then like a uh, terapagos it can't be set up, so it's going to be relegated to, like, support, probably. Like, just yeah. rapid spin with some... Like, it, it calm mind, it won't do anything. Skeletors will, will literally laugh. Um, yeah. And then set up back, you have uh, Calm Mind, Boom Burst, Earth Power, the Dunsparce. The Dunsparce really looks good. pretty freaking nasty this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, this is an 85, like, 15 to me. And it's a guy, Draco's team is scary, but I just think this is a dreadful matchup for him. Yeah, I, I'd go 80-20. I, I will give Draco's, like, I, I think... I, 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 I feel like Primarino maybe could do something. Because yeah, the, if he doesn't bring a water absorb Claude, Primarina can actually break this team. Yeah, so run. but if it's that, water that, absorb, he'll never get through. Yeah, I mean he could be just psychic, and if he's psychic Primarina, that would probably do a good amount to Claude. I, I yeah. think Primarina needs more moves to really do it, but um, because I think it needs sub also if it's going to set up in the long run. Because my Lodic can just haze it. Well, if my Lodic can haze it behind the yeah, my Lodic beats it every time because it can just haze it. And Claude Zyre also um. Like, it's really good against Sneasler. Like, Sneasler is kind of like, what do I do against Claude Zyre? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, a terrible matchup. It's, it, 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 it's pretty bad uh, for Dracos, in my opinion. Uh, he would he would need to play really, really well. I, I think, like... Okay, so, like, for example, there's no Dark type on the Norwalk Noivern side. So, yeah. uh, like, like, Scarf and Didi lead it. And then, like, spam expanding force. And then, uh, like, if before it dies, switch out or just, like, die really fast so there's still turns of it left. Go Deoxys yeah. speed and then just spam expanding force again. And just, like, try and cram as much expanding force down his throat and break him early. Yeah. And then try and, like, go from there. Like, break one or two early yeah. with expanding force and then go from there. That's actually... That's yeah. that. That's the line, I would say, Draco. Yeah. I, I I don't know if this is gonna go yeah. out before or after your yeah. game. The line spam expanding force as much as I mean I know Metagross is there and it could be like AV 
quad resist, which would be really annoying. Then you just lose. Just take yeah. the L then. Just but take the L. You, um, the best way to beat stall, like Draco, if you come against stall, the best way to beat stall is instantaneous offense. Like that's why wall breakers yeah. were invented like, like, to beat stall. Do you need shit like, that hits hard instantaneously? Double double specs in DD Dio speed, both expanding force. I think is like literally the way to go. That, I would I, do specs in DD. Yeah, I yeah, would do specs. In do, do do specs both. Do, literally just run specs on both and just spam expanding force or make Dio speed uh, like psychic spoon so that if metagross switches in you can shadow ball after or something like that yeah indeed he should be yep. specs though so um yep. like literally lead in dd and click expanding force that's what you should I, i'm giving direct advice i guess that's what you should try yep. and do uh, I'll, I'll i'll stick with 80 20 uh, that is the line in my opinion yeah all right oh there is one more game okay i was wrong so we do have one hey, more game. Ben, I gotta jump out for this one. I gotta go back to work. All right, sounds good. I'll uh, give okay. my opinion on I'm this last game. I'm, yeah, I'm going Scizor. Just looking at it, uh, seventy thirty. Yeah, uh, spoiler. I'm also gonna go Scizor, but I'll give a little bit more of my thoughts on the game. Okay. Yep. Goodbye, PBO people. Good luck into the games for everybody. See you. Peace. All right, so Scizor had a really, really impressive uh, week one. He had a really clear game plan with Doug Trio and Decumfe. It worked really, really well. Uh, Clombroke, on the other hand, in my opinion, is kind of uh, going in a little aimless in their first game, not really having a clear goal as to what they want to do other than, like, you know, try and sweep with King Gambit at the end. I think, you know, uh, Ogre Pond Heart Flame, it, it's, a, it's a threatening Pokemon, but, you know, there's Rotom Heat that's right there. And Petrunt is very, very uh, dangerous. Uh, I do think, like, for example, a uh, Raging Bolt could be really, really dangerous for this team because Dog Trio is the only uh, ground. But um, I, I, I think like Spidef Uxi or Spidef uh, Rotom Heat could, like, you know, take a hit or two. And then um, the likes of Darkrai are very, very devastating for Clombrook. Uh, I, again, I think Petrunt is just uh, crazy in this game. Uh, Petrunt can kind of actually, I think like set up Petrunt could really, really go well. Uh, and uh, if it's not set up, then just Toxic and then Parting Shot. You Parting Shot because the, the two switch ins are King Gambit and Tentacruel, obviously, right? But it seems like uh, Clombrook doesn't really want to bring King Gambit out too much until uh, the end game. So it would be Tentacruel. Um, <coughs> Tentacruel could obviously have Clear Body, which would be annoying for Parting Shot on Petrunt. That's why you would run Nasty Plot. But uh, I think if Tentacruel goes down, then uh, Petrunt kind of just has a field day against this team, pretty much. Um, Flamigo can be uh, pretty annoying for this team. Brave Bird plus Close Combat, uh, Dual Stab. It's just really, really difficult. Uh, King Gambit really can't uh, win as long as, the Petru as long as the Flamigo is around. And it's probably going to come as the Terror Captain, if I had to guess. Uh, Ogre Pond, you know, Heart Flame versus Wellspring here, obviously. Wellspring uh, really struggles against Raging Bolt, obviously. Uh, so I don't know if it actually has like a super amazing matchup here, especially because like there's Tentacruel, who uh, is neutral to the grass moves and uh, takes the Ivy Cudgels uh, not very effectively. So I don't even know if Wellspring necessarily needs to come to this game. I think like the line for Clombrook uh, should probably be, you know, King Gambit late game is obviously always good. Uh, Raging Bolt, like I said, I think has a pretty nasty matchup here. <laughs> I think Articuno Galar um, would need to be like Terra, Fairy, or Fighting Agility in order to really, you know, get something going this game. Because Darkrai uh, otherwise is uh, really, really dangerous. I think like Hypnosis Darkrai could be really, really annoying for Clombrook. Um, I don't think that... Uh, Hazard removal, which is just Blastoise literally on hit Pittsburgh side. I don't know if it's actually super necessary this game. The only hazards really are like I think King Gambit gets Stealth Rock and like Tentacruel and uh, Swampert. <laughs> I think those are all fine to kind of uh, try and just uh, motion through uh, the game with, especially if your Rotom Heat is uh, Heavy Duty Boots or, or your Petrons Heavy Duty Boots. Um, overall, I think I just like the offensive threats from Pittsburgh more. I think Tauros could actually have a pretty good game this week if it runs the uh, right coverage. Um, Swampert's kind of annoying, actually, 
if uh, Ogre Pond doesn't come. So maybe Wellspring does come just to put pressure on Swampert. Um, th there's a ton of Pokemon on Klombrook's side that just aren't Terra, so it it's hard to like see their full value. Like uh, Electros isn't Terra here, and like a, a Lilligant isn't Terra at all. So I, I just don't see like exactly what they're gonna do against Pittsburgh. Especially with the likes of, you know, Petrarump being there or like Duraludon. Um, I, I just feel like Pittsburgh has way more options open to him because his team just has uh, more valuable members overall. And with that, I'm going to uh, end the recording for Pick'ems of week two of the PBO. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all next week.